How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Today, I wanna to run you through how to charge an EcoFlow Delta II with a few different configurations. It's kind of an all-inclusive plug-and-play unit with a one kilowatt hour battery and an integrated inverter that can put out 1,800 watts continuous, which is pretty impressive for this size of portable power station as it comes in at only about 27 pounds. I'm using this for a few different applications, but one would be to install it in an off-grid shed and have power out at that shed something I can power up through some solar panels, and then I can run some lights, some cordless power tools, charge up those batteries, but even your cordless lawn equipment that's starting to become more and more popular for our home. So the real question is, how do we wire that in? Should we go with small 100 watt panels like we have here, or should we go with those larger panels in the back, which are 360 watt helium panels, and a little bit more towards where all your residential solar, your rooftop solar is going, which most of those panels are in the 400 watt range. So let me jump right into it. I'll show you a few different examples and try to max out the capability of the 500 watts of input solar power to charge this unit. Now, first up, you just wanna make sure you understand what are you actually going to be feeding the PV power into? And that is gonna be, like we talked about the Delta II, specifically going into an XT60 connector. And you can either look at the specifications online or you can check it out right here. And that is 11 to 60 volts and 15 amps max. So we cannot exceed 60 volts. That will not allow any power to come in if you exceed that. And then the 15 amps will be the max. But if you give it 16 or 17 or 18 capability, it will just limit it to 15 amps. So we'll look at that through the actual examples. In addition, if you get a Delta II, the cable does not come with it. You need to get this XT60 to MC4 cable, which is gonna let you convert from a standard MC4 connectors at a solar panel to the back of the EcoFlow unit. And then just as important, understand the specifications on your solar panels. These are for the larger solar panels we'll use, the Helion 360s. The two big things that I look at is gonna be the voltage open circuit, and then also the current short circuit or the current MPP. What does that all mean? The voltage open circuit is gonna be the highest voltage in an open circuit scenario, and it's almost 49 volts on these larger panels. Why you need to know that is because when you start wiring in series to bring in more panels, that is the easiest way to bring panels together, you're gonna to be adding up the open circuit voltage, and that cannot exceed the operating range for your charge controller or for the EcoFlow Delta II in our case today. So we would not be able to wire two of these panels into series because we'd be way over the upper range of 60 volts, almost bringing in 100 volts here with two helions in series. Now in practice, when you actually plug everything in and it starts running, your voltage and your current is actually gonna be closer to MPP or the maximum power point. And that's because the EcoFlow is going to adjust the voltage to try to maximize the amount of overall power. And that's what MPP stands for, is maximum power point. So in practice, plugged in, direct sunlight, standard test conditions, kind of perfect scenario. We're probably right around with the Helions, 40.45 volts and just under nine amps in terms of the current. So know the specs on your panels because that's gonna help you understand what the ideal wiring scenario is for your setup. So for the first scenario, let's use two 100 watt panels wired in series. We'll take the black negative wire from the first panel, connect that to the red positive wire of the second panel, and then we'll connect the two open ends to the EcoFlow Delta II. Now once we have that, I'll bring up the EcoFlow Delta II app, and we'll see right now we're not getting full sun, but we are getting 165 watts, so about 82 watts per panel in. Not too bad, but let's see if we can do a little bit better. So if you didn't know much about the open circuit voltage on these panels, which is about 24 volts, you'd probably just bring one more panel in, set it up, and then think it was as easy as just bringing that into series. Series wiring is gonna be the easiest setup by far. You don't need any additional wires to extend out. You don't need any additional parts, such as parallel branch connectors, which you need if you started to wire in parallel. But we can bring up the app again, and we're seeing nothing, just zero watts coming in. And that is because we now have exceeded the voltage. We went over the max 60 volts, so no power will come in. So I'll change things up a little bit and then I'll review it with you. So I'll take four panels now 
and actually do a little different configuration. This is called series parallel. So I'm taking the first two on the left hand side in series and then the right hand side the two in series and then bringing those into a parallel branch connector. So I'm wiring those into parallel. Now that's gonna give us about the best we can do with these panels. And right now with the sun condition, that's about 320 watts, which is not too bad, but a little shy of the 500 watts. So I'll go ahead and try out the big Helion 360s to see what we can get. Now, if you're new to solar, this can be quite a bit, just in terms of the units, power, energy, series wiring, parallel wiring, series parallel, it's a lot to take in. So just take your time, make sure you're working safely and kind of build your way up. Just start off with a simple 100 watt panel and then have something like a Delta II and you can kind of build your way up as your knowledge expands. And these are DIY setups. Now, if you're gonna go grid tied, I'm a big fan of DIY obviously, but roof mounted, grid tied. I leave up to the professionals and I'm getting a 11 kilowatt system put on my home. Where I started is just getting an idea on the cost. So there is a link in the description if that's something you're considering. I know in my state of Illinois, there are a ton of incentives that are at least now in 2023 and make it pretty compelling and really reduce the payback period. So after I looked at the cost, I pulled the trigger and should be getting that installed here in the coming months, which I'll document on this channel. Channel. And then just know if you're wiring in parallel, those branch connectors, whether you, whether you have rigid like this that can bring in two different branches, or you have a little bit longer branch connectors that go up to, let's say, four branches, link in the description over to our Amazon store and you'll see references on this type of hardware. You'll see references for the different EcoFlow power stations that I use. But now let's bring in these Helions and see if we can get up to that 500 watts. I'm not going to do one panel. One panel would give me about 320. It's within the specifications, plug and play. It'd be really easy. I want to bring two panels together in parallel. So we'll be coming in right at that 40 volts with the sun where it's at right now. And then we'll be cranking up our current where we probably will be maxing out the current up to right around 15 amps. And that would then be clipping the overall power that we could put in. So we'd be clipping the overall power, but we would be getting the maximum into this unit. We just wouldn't be fully leveraging the capability of our panels. So let's go ahead and plug it in. I'll bring up the app and we'll see what we get. Now bringing up the app, we'll see we're right at about 485 watts. So man, we are right at the limit, the maximum that we could bring into the Delta II. And this is a really great match. Again, not fully leveraging the two Helion panels, but for a good part of the day, if we have direct sunlight, we are gonna be maximizing that 500 watts into the Delta II and making sure we're charging that through the day so we have batteries for our applications out at a shed project, your tool trailer, at a tailgate, or whatever your application is. Hopefully that helped you out. And if you're just getting in, you need a little bit more on that wiring side, check out this video right here. We'll go through series, parallel, and series parallel with actual examples and drawing that out on a dry erase board to help you out. Also, if you're gonna be doing parallel, you should be using what are called inline fusing and sizing those out correctly. So check out this video down here and that will help you through with your inline fuses, making sure you get the right ones to protect your system. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.